Hello everyone, here we are. Let's get going with number seven and we're gonna go slow and simple and just do a few chapters because this is a lot of numbers, okay? I want you to polish your imaginations, open them up and just picture what's going on so that it's not tedious for you, okay? Um, we dedicate this to the Lord who is worthy and we thank him for everything that he does for us every day, even when we don't realize he's doing something for us. We know that he is. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. I've got a bunch of hairpins in my hair because I've got so many little pieces growing and I'm not complaining. It's just interesting. I know my father, before he died, had a huge head of white hair. So there's just no reason why I should not have my hair. So here we go with number seven. When Moses finished setting up the tabernacle, he anointed and consecrated it and all its furnishings. He also anointed and consecrated the altar and all its utensils. Then the leaders of Israel, the heads of families who were the tribal leaders in charge of those who were counted made offerings. They brought as their gifts before the Lord six covered carts and 12 oxen, an ox from each leader and a cart from every two. These they presented before the tabernacle. The Lord said to Moses, accept these from them that they may be used in the work at the tent of meeting. Give them to the Levites as each man's work requires. So Moses took the carts and oxen and gave them to the Levites. He gave two carts and four oxen to the Gershonites as their work required. Excuse me, my sinuses gave me the worst headache today. I am like loaded up on aspirin and some kind of sinus medicine. It was just a miserable day. I mean, it's just crazy here with the weather. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, and he gave four carts and eight oxen to the Merorites as their work required. They were all under the direction of Ithmar, son of Aaron the priest. But Moses did not give any to the Koratites because they were to carry on their shoulders the holy things for which they were responsible. Excuse me. When the altar was anointed, the leaders brought their offerings for its dedication and presented them before the altar. For the Lord had said to Moses, each day one leader is to bring his offering for the dedication of the altar. The one who brought his offering on the first day was Nashon, son of Amminadab of the tribe of Judah. Now remember, the tribe of Judah is the one that Jesus is going to come through, okay? His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels. Now, I want you to remember this because I'm not going to repeat this for every person. This is what they all give, okay? But it repeats itself over and over, and it's a whole big fat paragraph. So I'm going to read it once, and then I'll kind of, I'll, I'll skim over it so you get the point. <clears throat> Nashon's offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, one gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense. Think about how beautiful this is one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Nashon, son of Amminadab. Remember I told you the Bible often will speak and then it'll give a summation line? You know, it'll sum it up, and that's what that was. This was the offering of Nashon, son of Amminadab. 
On the second day, Nethanel, son of Zuar, the leader of Issachar, brought this offering. The offering he brought was a, one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, a silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, one gold dish weighing 10 shekels, filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Nethanel, son of Zur. Okay, now I'm not going to read that again because it's going to go through 12 tribes and it's going to be the identical offering. So I'll just touch base on the things, on the things that are offered. On the third day, Eliab, son of Halon, the leader of the people of Zebulun, brought his offering. He brought a silver plate weighing 130 shekels, a silver sprinkling bowl, uh, according to the sanctuary um, shekel, each mixed with fine flour, mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, a gold dish weighing 10 shekels filled with incense, a bull, a ram, five male goats and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Eliab, son of Halon. On the fourth day, Eliezer, son of Shadur, the leader of the people of Reuben brought his offering. The exact same thing, a silver plate, a silver sprinkling bowl, a gold dish filled with the grain offering. Uh, excuse me, the grain offering is in the silver dish. The gold dish had incense in it, then a young bull, a ram, a male, a lamb, a year old for blah, blah on and on and so forth, okay? On the fifth day, Shelumiel, son of Jerashaddai, the leader of the people of Simeon, brought his offering his offering exactly the same. On the sixth day, Eliasaph, son of Duel, the leader of the people of Gad, brought his offering. On the seventh day, Elishama, son of Amahud, the leader of the people of Ephraim, brought his offering. On the eighth day, Gamaliel, son of Petazur, the leader of the people of Manasseh, brought his offering. On the ninth day, Abadan, son of Gedoni, the leader of the people of Benjamin, brought his offering. On the tenth day, Ahizer, son of Amishadai, the leader of the people of Dan, brought his offering. So you can imagine how tedious this would be if I was reading the same paragraph under every name. So on the twelfth one, I'll read it again so we get the point. On the eleventh day, Pagiel, son of Akron, the leader of the people of Asher, brought his offering. On the twelfth day, Ahira, son of Enan, the leader of the people of Naphtali, brought his offering. Now I'll read it again. His offering, or I should say each one of them had this offering. The one was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and a silver sprinkling bowl weighing 70 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel, each filled with the finest flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, a gold dish filled with incense weighing 10 shekels, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Ahira, son of Enam. Okay, these were the offerings of the Israelite leaders for the dedication of the altar when it was anointed. 12 silver plates, 12 silver sprinkling bowls, and 12 gold dishes. Each silver plate weighed 130 shekels. Each silver sprinkling bowl, 70 shekels. Altogether, the silver dishes weighed 2,400 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. The 12 gold dishes filled with incense weighed 10 shekels each, according to the sanctuary shekel. Altogether, the gold dishes weighed 120 shekels. The total number of animals for the burnt offering came to 12 young bulls, 12 rams, and 12 male lambs a year old, together with the grain offering. 12 male goats were used for the sin offering. 
the total number of animals for the sacrifice of the fellowship offering came to 24 oxen, 60 rams, 60 male goats, and 60 male lambs a year old. These were the offerings for the dedication of the altar after it was anointed. When Moses entered the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him from between the two cherubim above the atonement cover on the Ark of the Covenant Law. In this way, the Lord spoke to him. I don't know, that would startle me <laughs> if I went into the, you know, um, temple and I heard the Lord speaking and then I realized it was between those two golden angels on the top of the Ark of the Covenant, that box. The mercy seat is the two angels looking down at the top of the box with their uh, their wings up and towards each other. And it was in that space that the voice was coming from. Spooky. All right. Uh, numbers eight. The Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and say to him, when you set up the lamps, see that all seven light up the area in front of the lampstand. Aaron did so. He set up the lamps so that they faced forward on the lampstand, just as the Lord commanded Moses. This is how the lampstand was made. It was made of hammered gold from its base to its blossoms. The lampstand was made exactly like the pattern the Lord had shown Moses. The Lord said to Moses, take the Levites from among all the Israelites and make them ceremonially clean. To purify them, do this. Sprinkle the water of cleansing on them. They have them, then have them shave their whole bodies and wash their clothes, and so they will purify themselves. Have them take a young bull with its grain offering of the finest flour mixed with olive oil, then you're to take a second young bull for a sin offering. Bring the Levites to the front of the tent of meeting and assemble the whole Israelite community. You are to bring the Levites before the Lord and the Israelites are to lay their hands on them. Aaron is to present the Levites before the Lord as a wave offering from the Israelites so that they may be ready to do the work of the Lord. Then the Levites are to lay their hands on the heads of the bulls, using one for a sin offering to the Lord and the other for a burnt offering to make atonement for the Levites. Have the Levites stand in front of Aaron and his sons and then present them as a wave offering to the Lord, which I'm sure would just be the waving of hands. In this way, you're to set the Levites apart from the other Israelites and the Levites will be mine. After you've purified the Levites and presented them as a wave offering, they are to come to do their work at the tent of meeting. They are the Israelites who are to be given wholly to me. I have taken them as my own in place of the firstborn, the first male offspring from every Israelite woman. Every firstborn male in Israel, whether human or animal, is mine. When I struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, I set them apart for myself, and I've taken the Levites in place of all the firstborn sons in Israel. From among all the Israelites, I've given the Levites as gifts to Aaron and his sons to do the work at the tent of meeting on behalf of the Israelites and to make atonement for them so that no plague will strike the Israelites when they go near the sanctuary. Moses, Aaron, and the whole Israelite community did with the Levites just as the Lord commanded Moses. The Levites purified themselves and washed their clothes. Then Aaron presented them as a wave offering before the Lord and made atonement for them to purify them. After that, the Levites came to do their work at the tent of meeting under the supervision of Aaron and his sons. They did with the Levites, just as the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord said to Moses, this applies to the Levites. Men, 25 years old or more, shall come to take part in the work at the tent of meeting. But at the age of 50, they must retire from their regular service and work no longer. They may assist their brothers in performing their duties at the tent of meeting, 
but they themselves must not do the work. This then is how you are to assign the responsibilities of the Levites. All right, Numbers 9. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time, celebrated at the appointed time at twilight, the evening, of the, on the 14th day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover, and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses, but some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, We've become unclean because of a dead body, but why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, Wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, when any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body, or are away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover, but they are to do it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if anyone who is ceremonially un uh, clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from their people for not presenting the Lord's offering at the appointed time. They will bear the consequences of their sin. A foreigner residing among you is also to celebrate the Lord's Passover in accordance with its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for both the foreigner and the native born. All right. Now that's funny because he, he's having the ceremonially unclean as well as the clean do it at, in the evening on the 14th day of the month at twilight. Oh, he's just telling them you can, you can celebrate it. Okay. On the day of the, on the day of the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law was set up. The cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That's how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. So the Lord is leading them, isn't he? At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the, Lord, the Lord's order and did not set out. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, oh, sometimes the cloud, was, sorry, I was going to repeat myself. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they didn't camp, and then at his command, they'd set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. All right, we'll do one more, as long as it's not super long. And then we're going to find out how many books are in numbers. Okay, here we go. The Lord said, this is 10. The Lord said to Moses, make two trumpets of hammered silver and use them for calling the community together and for having the camps set out. <coughs> Excuse me. 
When both are sounded, the whole community is to assemble before you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. If only one is sounded, the leaders, the heads of the clans of Israel are to assemble before you. When a trumpet blast is sounded, the tribes camping on the east are to set out. At the sounding of a second blast, the camps on the south are to set out. The blast will be the signal for setting out. To gather the assembly, blow the trumpets, but not with the signal for setting out. The sons of Aaron, the priests, are to blow the trumpets. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you and the generations to come. When you go into battle in your own land against an enemy who's oppressing you, sound a blast on the trumpets. Then you'll be remembered by the Lord your God and rescued from your enemies. Also, at your times of rejoicing, your appointed festivals and new moon feasts, you're to sound the trumpets over your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, and they will be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord your God. On the 20th day of the second month of the second year, the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle of the covenant law. Then the Israelites set out from the desert of Sinai and traveled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert of Paran, P-A-R-A-N. They set out this first time at the Lord's command through Moses. The divisions of the camp of Judah went first under their standard. Nashon, son of Amminadab, was in command. Nethanel, son of Zur, was over the division of the tribe of Issachar, and Eliab, son of Halon, was over the division of the tribe of Zebulun. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the Gershonites and Merorites who carried it set out. The divisions of the camp of Reuben went next under their standard, or their flag. Eliezer, son of Shadur, was in command. Shelumiel, son of Zurashaddai, was over the division of the tribe of Simeon, and Eliasaph, son of Duel, or Eliasaph, son of Duel, was over the division of the tribe of Gad. Then the Kohatites set out, carrying the holy things. The tabernacle was to be set up before they arrived. The divisions of the camp of Ephraim went next under their standard. Elishama, son of Amahud, was in command. Gamaliel, son of Petazur, was over the division of the tribe of Manasseh, and Abadan, son of Gedoni, was over the division of the tribe of Benjamin. Finally, as the rear guard for all the units, the divisions of the camp of Dan set out under their standard. Ahizer, son of Amashadai, was in command. Pajil, son of uh, Okran, I think I called him Pagil before, but it's Pajil, son of Okran, was over the division of the tribe of Asher, and Akira, son of Enan, was over the division of the tribe of Naphtali. This was the order of march for the Israelite divisions as they set out. Now Moses said to Hobab, son of Ruel, uh, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for the place about which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us and we will treat you well, for the Lord has promised good things in Israel. He answered, no, I will not go. I'm going back to my own land and my own people. Okay. But Moses said, please don't leave us. You know where we should camp in the wilderness and you can be our eyes. If you come with us, we'll share with you whatever good things the Lord gives us. So he's got a Midianite there, somebody who's not an Israelite, and it's his father-in-law, and he's saying, please stay because you have knowledge of the wilderness that we don't have. So they set out from the mountain of the Lord and traveled for three days. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord went before them during those three days to find them a place to rest. The cloud of the Lord was over them by day when they set out from the camp. Whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Rise up, Lord. May your enemies be scattered. May your foes flee before you. Whenever it came to rest, he said, Return, Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. Okay, so tomorrow we will start with Numbers 10. And let's look here. How many chapters in Numbers? Ooh, 
There are 36 chapters in this book, so I'm glad we did a little, a little extra tonight. Okay, so tomorrow we'll start with 11. I don't want to go too fast, though, because there's a lot of repetition. And I'm, glad, I'm feeling guilty that I didn't read every paragraph, but this time around, I think this is the third or fourth time we've been in the Old Testament. And this time around, I'm going to give myself a break because that paragraph, to say that over and over about the silver, I can repeat it. Let's see if I can do it. The silver platter weighing 130 shekels according to the sanctuary shekel, the silver sprinkling bowl that weighs 70 shekels according to the sanctuary shekel, filled with flour and grain mixed with olive oil as a goodwill offering, I think. And then a bull, a ram, a goat or something, and then, you know, five lambs, five goats, on and on and so forth. And I just, reading that paragraph over and over 12 times to me is difficult. Okay, so you get the point. Each tribe on each following day, a new tribe would come, their leader would come and present that uh, in the tent of meeting or the tabernacle. Okay, so you got the point. All right, so there's a lot to read here. Uh, we will get through it. We'll start with Numbers 11 tomorrow. In the meantime, let's get saved. If you don't know this God, I'm inviting you to come and get to know him now. But knowing him and being a part of his kingdom means that you make a declaration, just like an immigrant makes a declaration when they want to be naturalized or become Amer an American citizen. They stand in front of a judge holding a little flag and they repeat an oath that they will be a good American citizen. And this is what you're going to do. Now, good citizen of God's kingdom is a process because we all have a sin nature and we all sin, okay? But I'll get to that. Right now, if you're ready, and I think you should be ready when you look at the state of the world, I want you to simply repeat after me, okay? Here we go. Father, I admit I'm a sinner. I thank you for dying on a cross to be the sacrifice for my sin so that when I die, I don't have to go pay for my sin myself by dying and spending an eternity away from you when you're the one who makes the sun rise. I invite you to come into my heart, Father, and dine with me and live with me there. Let's dine on your word. You'll be my friend, my father, my king, and my savior, because I can't save myself. I thank you for the gift of eternal life that you're giving me so that when I die, Father, I will live in your kingdom forever because my name, my citizenship is written there as of right this moment. In your name, I pray, amen. You're saved. That's all it takes, but the world is too proud to do it. You're now set free from Satan's rule, Jesus' death on the cross, the shedding of his life through his blood, sets you free. You're free. You have one job. Keep coming back. Because God is the word and the word is God. That's what Genesis tells us. It's the same thing. So you're not going to go out and try to never sin again. That doesn't work. If you could do that, Jesus wouldn't have had to die a terrible death on the cross. Okay? All you need to do is keep coming back and listening to the word and let it wash you okay don't try to fix yourself if you've tried that before it hasn't worked what's going to fix you is the word you're not going to lose yourself you're going to be you all polished and shiny what does that look like you've never seen it yet and neither has anybody who knows you but you're going to shine brighter than a star when Jesus is finished polishing you up. And he does that with, with his word. Let him do the heavy lifting, okay? Welcome to the kingdom. There's a billion of us here. And we're all here to, to support you, okay? Just keep coming back. You can take a half an hour, six days a week, to just sit under God's word. You don't even have to understand it. Just let it pour down on you, okay? I love you guys very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. We'll pick it up with Numbers 11, and we'll get closer to the middle of this book, okay? I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.